Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. A little bit of alternate ending back up in this piece in the form of their Boomba Iberian Lager. I don't know what Iberian Lager means. It says here, Iberian Lager brewed with short grain rice grown in Spain. Is that what it makes that? And a few pinches of saffron. I've never had, I don't think I've ever had saffron in a beer. I love saffron. Very expensive. We'll talk about that. 4% uh, alcohol by volume, alternate ending, and the lovely little Lita presents. So um, they do all their beers have a movie reference to it. Um, uh, I don't know, uh, lovely Lita. I don't, it just says down here, so I don't know if it's straight up collab, but all their um, beers have a movie reference because they have a movie theater in the brewery. Uh, they're one of the few brew pubs in New Jersey. They actually have food and beer and mixed drinks and a whole nine they show movies. I actually got this at the brewery. I went to the brewery for the first time and went to a bottle share <laughs> at the brewery um, uh, with a bunch of people, had a great time, and you know, obviously I had to grab something when I was leaving. This look the part. Uh, this was canned, this is Lager Life. It was canned on November 21st. We are December 9th. And I dig this can design. There's something about it that reminds me of something, this little filigree up on top and the bottom. Uh, I mean, it's their logo, but there's something about it. But I, I can dig on it. Saffron. Saffron is the first spice ingredient um, that I ever saw under lock and key. I mean, it's kind of a, a normal thing now, but back in the day, um, when I was getting into beer, um, it was pre kind of like safety seals when it came to like spices and stuff. Um, so, I, you know, my journey into beer kind of coalesced with my journey into food. And um, I would always go to the spice section um, at, at, at uh, uh, supermarkets and I would actually go to the place and I'd open up and smell them, you know, you know, just give it a huff and see what, you know, cause you're drinking beer and you want to be like, what's that, what's that flavor? What's that smell? What's that taste? And I would kind of do that to associate it. And I always, whenever I did it, I always take a little whiff of saffron just cause I love it so much. And then one day I just, it was a Wegmans I was going to, one day I went there and it was gone. I was like, oh man, that sucks. They don't have saffron anymore. And then I went to go cook something that required saffron, and I went back there, and I was like, oh, they don't have it. Let me go ask if they can get it. And they go, oh, no, we have it. We have to keep it behind <laughs> our uh, our counter, and because it's so expensive, people will just put steal it. I was like, okay. Um, it, because, and then I ordered, you know, you get those McCormick jars, the glass, well, they're all plastic now, but the glass jar. It had, like, they give you one of those, and it'd be, like, 27 bucks for saffron, but it would be an envelope with a few sprigs of saffron in it. So, alternate ending. Way to step it up with super high adjunct cost non-effectiveness. Anyway, uh, dig the can in. Beer looks part of a soft kind of rice lager. I mean, it has like a little bit of haze to it. Um, uh, soft, uh, you know, it had a soapy head, but I talk way too long, so it kind of dissipated by now. But it looks the part of a nice little kind of rice-based lager. It's good nose. I mean, it has a graininess to it. I'm going to tell you it's rice. Meh. You know, um, it's more just a kind of a Pilsner malt, a little crackeriness to it, but there's something there, so you're going to try to attribute that to the, to the rice they're using the beer itself. Am I getting saffron? I don't believe so. At least on my nose. just comes off as a hyper, super crisp kind of lager. Let's dive in. Cheers, y'all. really good it's really really good man I drink this blind I like this beer a lot I drink this blind I don't think I even get close to calling out saffron I can't remember the last time I had saffron on a dish so it's not like it's something I'm super in tune with but I know the flavor and I know it really really well I drink this blind I I think I go there's something in this and I don't know what it is. That's where I would go with this beer. It kind of shows it has to be the saffron coming through. It could be a green thing too, because we'll get to the actual bits and bobs of what's going on, but it just comes off as a super snappy lager, a super snappy rice lager, with a cool little peppery spicy twist that you know isn't yeast derived. It's coming off something that was inputted in a beer, and it most certainly has to be part of that from the saffron. So up, up front, super light, delicate, but snappy malt bill so that race is coming to a head bringing everything to it that brings a super nimbly kind of american crispy boy status to it 
There's a bittering to it, it's nice. It's not Czech level bittering, but it's nice kind of purposeful bittering, maybe a little melon component floating in that hop. I'm really digging for something. And then there's that spiciness that I attribute to the saffron. It might be part of the race. They talk about a short grain rice grown in Spain. I don't know what that is, if that's bringing spiciness, so I attribute most of that to a hop, combination of hops and probably the saffron, because there is a spicy pepperiness to it and a floralness to it. That's kind of, you know, hot. saffron is essentially the pistol or the pestle or this thing of a flower, and it brings this kind of spicy floralness to it. Minimal, again, we're talking about something that's sub 5%, but you know there's something involved there. You know there's something really cool that's bringing this cool kind of quirky twist to the beer, and without having any other idea of ingredients or any of those things, you almost have to point your finger at it. Like I said at the beginning, give this to me blind. There's, I don't think there's any stretch, any amount. Uh, you give me a hundred guesses, I don't think I get the saffron. But it's got to be that. And it makes for a really cool beer. I'm really, really curious as to how much saffron they put in this. Because they, they brew on a 10 barrel system. How much saffron do you have to put? into a beer for it to come off like this. You know, and it's so hyper expensive. So it's like, you know, I bought, the, I think, I, I don't, I wanna say this is probably like 14 bucks for a sixer. Man, it's gotta be like a love beer where you're not trying to make a ton of money off it just to use saffron. Cause even if you throw a couple sprigs in it, I don't think you get this level of that, that out of the north, excuse me, spiciness that you're getting in here. So I think you have to use a meaningful amount. I dig it. I like the cut. I really do. I think it's a fun mix of a couple different things. One, lager, life. It works. This isn't a modern game. It says lager's life. Um, so you have that going for it. You have that rice, rice lager that also has a bit of maltiness to it outside of what typical just a straight up light rice lager has, but it still remains snappy. And then it has that spiciness. I think it's a combination of hops and saffron, but the saffron is definitely playing a part in here in a very, very cool way. I think it's fantastic. I think it's one of the better, if not one of the best lagers that I've had in quite some time. It's that good. It's almost like weird. It's like tricking me into th thinking I don't love it because I'm thinking about it and trying to dissect it so much. It's like if you're a musician and you listen to music, um, sometimes you have a hard time just sitting back and enjoying the music because you're thinking about timing and mess ups and they screw up there. What did they could have done there? You dissect the song and you think about it rather than sit back and enjoying it. And it's kind of that thing going on. But if you actually just sit back and just drink it on, a, on what it is, very tasty beer, very well done, zero flaws whatsoever. And a cool twist on a Iberian lager, the best one I've ever had, because it's the only one I've ever had, but lager in general, American, Americanified lager. And by that, I mean craft American lager, which they get weird with it. One of the better ones I had. Rush, Mount Rushmore status, let's put it that way. Um, value availability on this, I don't remember. I bought two, I bought a four pack of a black IPA and I bought a six pack of this and it was less than 40 bucks. So I'm guessing black IPA 16, this might've been like 13 or somewhere around those lines. Um, and leave it with, if you like what we like, yes. If you like crispy boy snappy lagers, but you want a little bit of like peppery spice and if you like saffron, you like cool twists on low ABV crushers, you will dig this. So there you go. Review in the book. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Um, alternate ending. Have you been to the brewery? Have you had their beers? Have you had their food? Have you had watched the movie there? Have you had this beer? All that fun stuff down there. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a little bit of saffron-based beer right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers, y'all.